Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Marcus Egan. Uh, I work at, at Lucidworks, where I lead the uh, developer relations. We're working hard to bridge the gap between uh, developers and Apache Solar, Lucene, Spark, and a host of other open source technologies, as well as our uh, proprietary offerings, so that people know how to, to use them and, and can build upon them and extend them. I'm hoping that uh, my talk from today maybe introduces you to a new open source project and inspires you to, to try out some of, our pro some of our products and some of the open source tools that we use so you can build something better. Um, but so that everybody knows uh, what we're going to discuss, uh, there it is, uh, how Solar, Spark, TensorFlow, and Superset made me money. <laughs> um, and, you know, I'm not really much of a gambler. Uh, I consider investing in the stock market, you know, much more risky than, than say, working at Lucidworks for options, you know. <laughs> like, I just don't, I'm not really big on gambling. However, here's why you should pay attention. So uh, I, I built a, a, a search app that used analyst data. Oh, by the way, feel free to take any pictures. Uh, tweet out as much as you want to. Um, I don't care about any of this. This, this, was, this was an experiment that I was willing to take to really force myself to be invested in this project. Um, so the, I built a search app that you'll see pretty shortly here that, that helped me realize a 48% return on uh, my $8,000 uh, gambling, which I was very nervous about and very, had a lot of anxiety because it's not my thing. But uh, the search app uh, was, to summarize, it was powered by uh, TensorFlow. It, was, it used convolutional neural networks to classify uh, documents in an index pipeline. So we were ingesting data and adding a field that was a uh, predicted value. Uh, and it, the, the interesting thing about it, I'll get into later, was uh, this is sort of an introductory. It's like the interesting thing about it is like the, the model that we built was not built for financial analyst sentiment gauge. Um, no, we didn't, we, that's outside of my realm of expertise. It, was, it would have been very cumbersome and expensive and taken a long time. So this is also maybe an introduction for some or exploration in the realm of transfer learning. Uh, you know, taking learnings from one domain or one exercise and applying them to another. Uh, and, and I think we had, I think that was a big part of our success is because uh, I, I don't know anything about gambling or investing in stocks. So this is what the, uh, so over the same period, this is what the S&P 500 has done in the United States. So they say, like, if you just invest in indexes, more or less you'll beat, you'll beat all the big name investors. Like index always wins, or nine times out of 10, it'll be. And I say, if you use TensorFlow, you'll beat the indexes. So indexes beat the best investors. TensorFlow beats the indexes. And for a little comparison, that's... Um, but, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on that because it's not about the money for me. It's about the community. Uh, DevRel at Lucidworks is a new area. It's very uh, challenging, but I think it's sort of uh, a testament to... Uh, how much the company cares. Um, 
I run meetups all over the world. I, I help people get started and help those meetups become self-sustaining. Uh, there's a few that I've worked on earlier in the year. I'm going to be working on six more in the second half of the year. If anybody in here uh, is a, wants to like have a meetup in their city, I don't care where you are, just let me know. Um, I also am a contributor, new contributor to Solar, also Superset, which you'll see here. Um, doing a, a lot of different things for both of them. Um, some of them are long-term projects, some of them are short. Uh, and I've contributed to a lot of other projects in my life. Uh, I'm also a long-time open source hacker in my hood, so like, I was trying to like, steal my parents' internet and give it to the other people. Um, and also trying to do other nefarious things from a long, you know, young age, just curious. But uh, I'm based in San Francisco, that was in Detroit, and I'm willing, like I said, to help you kick off a meetup. Now, uh, what I built, which I'll show you in just a second, is uh, transfer learning powered navigation. It's facets, so I, I view search as the, the future of navigating an application. You're not going to, there's not gonna be a menu box or like a hamburger in the corner you click. You're just gonna tell the application where you want to go or what information you need. Uh, and uh, that's why I got into search and, and I think you'll see some of that in just a moment. Uh, I use sentiment analysis tool that was trained unstructured data. Uh, it was classified by definition. I'll, I'll talk about what that means or by what that is here. It's in the same language and it's a similar domain. So there was some topical overlap. So we, uh, there's, we have a data science team and they spent a long time working on uh, e-commerce review data. And that's a good data set because well, you know, you know the quality. You can assess the reliability of a review if it's verified, uh, like if someone actually purchased the item they're reviewing. There's still fake reviews out there that are verified purchasers I found online, but more or less a verified purchaser bought the product and wrote a review candidly. Also, they're classified with, with some degree of, I mean, it, it's it, with some degree of certainty. So one and two you can assume those are going to be negative reviews, one and two stars. Uh, and four and five stars, you can assume they're going to be good reviews or good sentiments. And so I think that that, that was a good, uh, a good project for them and it turned out it worked out for me. Uh, I, didn't, I couldn't predict it. There was some topical overlap and I noticed when I was reviewing my data that a lot of the stocks and like a lot of the different things that I purchased uh, were on Amazon. They're sold on Amazon. So I don't know if that has anything to do with anything, but uh, it's hard to dig in. And one day I'll, I'll know because we're doing more testing in my time that I can. And so let's, let me show you the app really quickly. That's, that's a, a look at the app. I'm actually going to bring the app over and drive uh, for you on the screen. But uh, the way it works is it will give you facets uh, that will predict the, the sentiment of analyst articles. But I want you to take a look at uh, this list right here. Um, in particular, in particular, the second, the second article on the left from analyst reviews. Um, does anyone have an idea what the sentiment is? Well, I'm lazy, and sometimes when I'm going through all these articles, I've, I've been starting it up and loading it every day, more or less, a lot of days, checking to see you know, what's good and what's bad. And even today, I, I looked at this why Beyond Meat stock pop 10% and immediately thought, buy? Because like, oh, it's doing really well still. Like, I've heard it's doing really well because I've been reading. And if you look at the, the text below, the body text, it's like, Wall Street Journal is bullish on Beyond Meat, but it's got nothing to do with fundamentals. So typically, 
that's a that is a bad sign that there's something uh, there's some underlying issue. So let me show you the app in action. Um, oh shoot. It's hard to work this. And then, so, see I got a lot of tabs, uh, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use these tabs. Um, this is, this is positive sentiment articles, posi positive sentiment classified articles from our model. So here, I'm logged out. I'll log back in really quickly. Let's see here. Everyone here that has a computer will be able to do this in just a moment. Um, and it'll give you all your credentials and everything in your own instance. Uh, I'll save it because I don't have, I've never worked on this. So uh, here you can see uh, it's a very simple app. It's not too fancy. Um, it was built, we have like a, a, UR, a UI framework that we use for building search apps called TwigKit, and it has a lot of features for, fat, for quickly building um, UIs. And that, I just use it to build bare bones UIs. Like I, I don't even want any, if I could just have a search box and all the content surface later, that'd be better. Like I want the first result to be the one I've been looking for. I don't want to go through it. So here you can kind of see how the facets are applied. Uh, if you apply, you can close that. But um, just scrolling through this, I mean, it's pretty peculiar. Let's see. If I do Lulu Lemon. So Lulu Lemon. Oh, wow. Earlier today, they were more positive than they're negative. Now they're negative more negative, but just barely. So you have to kind of take all of these results with a grain of salt and, and read through the articles when you can. Um, I don't know what they mean, but Apple, overwhelmingly positive. Um, let's see if there's another one. Oh, no, they're not even in here anymore. Well, that's good. So this is, uh, this app is, only crawling the newer articles. I, I, I don't know if like the other articles aren't in the same place, but they just don't end up in the index, uh, typically. And then, so that's the app. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the important thing is like, all I'm doing is, I mean, I'm searching and, and faceting on uh, the TensorFlow value, TensorFlow generated values. So I'll talk more about that. So all the time, I mean, the biggest thing for me is like I read these articles myself and I get, I get them wrong all the time. Like I don't know what it's saying and sentiment analysis does better. Uh, just like sentiment analysis has proven to be, or like, I mean, convolutional neural networks have been have proven to be effective at MRI reading, more effective at X-ray reading than, than radiologists who are like among the most trained, most highly trained doctors. And I think there's hope uh, that computers will be better drivers soon. And then humans are slow, they take breaks, they need food, they're otherwise hangry. Uh, this is why I built it. And so, the other reasons are it's difficult to view Scala predictions at scale, and we need a fast visualization that was lighter and cheaper than Tableau. So you will get to use that in just a moment. Um, is anybody here familiar with Apache Superset? Has anybody used it ever, seen it? Okay. Anybody here, you are? Anybody here familiar with Apache Solar? I'm kidding. <laughs> Search conference. But... Uh, yeah, Tableau is too expensive for me. If, and so if you can add machine learning to an index pipeline 
Uh, I think you need to have some ability to see what's going on. Um, and then here we'll justify a good time to invest. Uh, sign up for a Fusion instance in Google Cloud just for simplicity and dealing with solar. Uh, spin up a superset service on the same server. It's going to start on its own. You don't have to do anything. Uh, and create a dashboard of the data matching certain SQL queries against your collection so you can see what the, what the smart index recommends. So all the, the, there is a Spark shell you can uh, play with in the, in the instance. So if you want to SSH into your instance uh, and play on the Spark shell with like one example, you're welcome to do that as well. Like something that has nothing to do with financial analysts so you can see how the sentiment an, uh, an analysis model functions outside of there. So if, any, if anybody wants to, does anybody want to actually go through the, uh, the lab? I've heard that, that some pe like people do this and then maybe one or two people uh, actually go through the lab, but I can also just show you what you would have to do. And it's pretty straightforward. So if you wanted to see this. So at the end, I'm going to show you, I'm going to share what my big winners were so you can know. So if you go to LucidWorks Labs, um, it's not on here, and View Labs Dashboard. So you can, you would have to go here. I mean, you have to create an account. Um, and it's not like a spam or like email marketing, anything. It's just we have to be able to tie an individual to a server because what if they do something uh, bad with it and we don't, we have no ability to, you know, stop them or prevent them from more havoc. Uh, but uh, occasionally I reach out if, if to see if any developers have questions, but that's it. Um, you would create an instance. In this case, it's what I call the financial oracles. And so I'll show you how it works here. I'm sorry? Oh, it's not, it's not on the screen. Thank you. Why is it? I must have hit. So, here you go. Sorry about that. So you can see, I want it to be full screen so you can see everything. So, yeah, this is a temporary instance. It only lasts for uh, 24 hours. I started this one a few minutes, uh, I guess a, an hour ago or less, and it will tell you your credentials, and, and you can access the solar admin UI if you're more familiar with the solar admin UI. Um, gives you public IP and a direct link to the app that we've been discussing, like the search app. So there are a few people uh, going through it, so I'll just wait. Uh, briefly. So if you, just as a reminder, you can go to uh, lucidworks.com slash labs and then view the, the labs dashboard. I'll go through that one more time so people can see it. Lucidworks labs, view labs dashboard, instances. So uh, is Eric Hatcher in here? So Eric, co-founder of Lucidworks, he worked a lot on on this project, a lot on the labs project and uh, advising me on, on this project as well. So he can probably answer more questions. Uh, but actually, yeah, that's probably not true. <laughs> but it sounds good. So uh, yeah, once you, once you create, once you authenticate and you have a user, uh, these access attributes tell you everywhere uh, that you need to go. The for for the search app to access tensor to access superset you you need to take the public IP which is right here and there uh, public IP and it's running I I wrote a start script to just spin up a Docker container um, and the password for everyone is admin superset and it 
you can load it with with test data, but I didn't load it with any test data because I wanted people to see how to connect to it um, and see how they can use it for visualizing visualizing search AI. So once you once you have your lab once you have your lab started um, you can click on the demo URL if you click the direct link it'll take you off of this page which is bad so I think you want to click the first link and it'll take you to a login and I called it short search just because I think it was most helpful for me and understanding what I should not invest in or invest in uh, options, put options that expect the stock to, to fail, um, which are risky. And I'm not giving anybody financial advice, to be clear. I'm just, this is just, I tried it with this. I don't know anything about finance. Um, So, and, and then you also get a, the Fusion admin. Now, the Fusion admin is um, the Fusion admin is an interface for for Solar mostly for this exercise, but it's also the way we were able to uh, add TensorFlow really easily to our to a search pipeline to an index pipeline specifically. So, typically, if you see anything, typically. Uh, if you wanted to add TensorFlow to whether uh, your indexes, index pipelines or query pipelines, you would need to tr train the model in the traditional tool set, tool chain that you use. Like uh, we use Jupyter Notebooks, but that's just because that's what we use in school. You can also just use the command line. Um, and then uh, protocol buffer is what you should use to serve your, serve your model up, because that's a pretty universal uh, vendor agnostic data interchange format. So if, you, if you're not familiar with protocol buffers or how to, how to use them for serving your models, you can Google it or send me an email. I'll point you in the right direction. Um, and then we're actually uh, serving, serving the model with Spark. But we'll get into that in just a minute. Um, so once you log in, let's see. If you just click on the password, it'll copy also. Once you log in, you can, uh, you, saw, you saw the app, but you should log into Fusion. You can see, you'll see a welcome quick start guide. That's not really that useful for this talk. Um, you can see in the query workbench the fields that are present in, in the crawling of the Yahoo News app. So these fields are, I mean, these are all in the web page. I didn't define them. And we map each field to uh, solar field, so uh, token and string. And then here, this field was, was added by me, the sentiment field. And I'll show you how I added that so you can see it. it's not too complicated. So... So I'm not going to wait for the field to simulate results. They'll show up. Yeah, I essentially, I loaded my model, which I store in a zip. So you have to, if you're serving up uh, TensorFlow models with Spark, you have to bundle them, right? And 
Uh, so here's the zip, the bundled zip of the TensorFlow model. And the input field, in my case, is input field. But that's, it's really important that uh, the actual field is the body uh, of the article. There's a, I think there's a body right here. And so it's best to copy an existing solar field to another field if you're going to be using it for learning, just to isolate. Like, say you update a solar field, um, uh, but you... No, you, uh, you update a model. Or either way, if you update a solar field or a model, you want them to be loosely coupled from each other, just as a, a best principle. And in this case, we're copying, if you do any manipulation to the body, like in your UI, you don't want to do that manipulation to what the model's being fed, right? So that's another reason why, and part of the loose coupling. So this is just pure text. We haven't done any manipulation to it. Um, and then we're predicting the sentiment. And then, let's see here. I've already indexed the data for anyone who's uh, going through the lab, so you can sort of quickly get up and running. Now I can show you how to connect to Superset. Connect your solar collection to Superset. I encountered a lot of pain with this, but uh, it's gotten better. And I made a small contribution to make it easier, too. Um, and I'm going to expand on that if it needs expanding upon. But uh, it, if you go to, so in Superset, it's a pretty simple uh, user interface. That's one of the things I like about it. And you just have to add a database. So, add a database here. Um, the name of your database is the name of your collection. So, I mean, I could step through actually doing this, uh, but I think the, the principles are just, I mean, they're the most important. You just need to specify the name of the collection that you want to expose and superset. So, in this case, it's financial oracles. And then there's... Uh, you have to use a SQL Alchemy URI. Uh, so Solar SQL is super powerful. Fusion SQL makes it easier to connect to Superset, but you can do this with Solar SQL. If you have any questions, you can reach out. Um, and these other these other fields aren't really needed to get up and running immediately. I mean, expose this uh, DB in the SQL lab is probably going to be interesting because you can do some more explorations without using the UI. So let's see here. To, to determine, so in this SQL Alchemy URI, this is tricky. It's not going to be the same for everyone, but uh, if you are trying to connect in a cloud environment, you're going to need to specify your internal IP it's it, because the external IP is on the other side of a load balancer and the, uh, syst your systems have no idea about it, the ephemeral IP. So let's see if I, so to find the new, I, to find the internal IP, the best thing I could come up with uh, for in time for this talk, which is, uh, which was to just specify pipe true, the first pipe true result in the council log is where your internal IP is. So by the way, in, in labs, you can always see council log, uh, just in case you want to follow along and understand what's going on. Um, so this is, this is also one of my, my favorite uh, features of this app, 
the labs app is like you can actually see what's going on and follow along. If you want to create, recreate some of this in your own environment uh, and what you're trying to do. So Hive, colon, SQL Alchemy URI string is pretty basic. It's the standard format and then password, which I got to go back and look at. And then that's a good example. So this, what this means is so there's, there's two methods for uh, communicating in, with Hive, and we use transport, I mean, we use binary. And there's a few ways for authenticating, but I mean, we could go down a rabbit hole on authentication. You could, if you need LDAP or, or something else more enterprise uh, friendly, you, all of the authentication options are available to you. This is just about connecting to SQL. So then I'm going to jump right into adding this. And the password is Also, this won't go long, but if you leave, you'll miss out on what's the big what the big winners are. So, uh, yeah, oh, perfect. So, I tried to connect to. It never works the first time for me for some reason. This time it worked the first time. So, the format is just Hive admin Hive colon slash slash, and you can see it above. It's uh, straightforward. But the important thing to remember is the internal IP if you're using our environment. Um, and then you save that. Again, it's pretty simple and intuitive. And uh, here to add, to add tables. So table here is the financial oracles. The schema is default. So uh, if you don't specify schema uh, and Solar SQL, it's default always. And then the table name, I'll make the same just to prevent any accidents. So then when you get to creating a chart, uh, it's, it's, again, really simple. And I think that you'll find some use for this. And we'll hop in the Spark shell as well so you can see how it varies uh, in terms of usability and ease. And like really getting your company to invest in machine learning. It's like a, a lot of companies, they have maybe somebody's working on something, it's not in production, or there's not a lot of investment in it, or there's not a whole lot of confidence. I think the important thing about something like this is it makes uh, what machine learning is doing for your business really accessible and even auditable. So you can evaluate it, you can share these dashboards, email. Uh, because people aren't going to dive in and try to understand all the things that are going on and happening uh, behind the scenes. I think the dashboards give them a, a quick uh, uh, entry into entry point into what's going on. So if we create a new chart here, this is all coming from Solar and from Fusion. And I guess the simplest chart would be like, you know, is this a good time to invest? And so, I mean, looking at my, the graph from earlier, you're probably thinking, yes. Um, now, there's no, we're not using any of the dates. There, there are date time fields in that uh, index that we have from the crawled Yahoo News data, but we're not using it because it's not the article which is a shame. It's like when we fetched it and when it was last modified, which is like um, 50 years ago. So not really when we last modified it. And then let's see here. So the count is just exactly what it sounds like. 
And then uh, group by is when we get into picking the prediction. But I don't know if you saw, you can see all these fields um, to understand which one. And it's to understand which ones are available. And here's how simple it is. Bam. So overwhelmingly, and it, it's changing throughout the day. So earlier this morning, I would say it was even more overwhelmingly positive. Um, the, the numbers were lower, but so you can see that's how simple it was just to show, you know, market sentiment in general. Um, and this is what the analysts think about the market. I don't know, like, how, how much analysts' uh, information maps to, uh, like, the, the actual stock market, but they all claim that they have led to all of these, these uh, successes. So maybe it, that is a good place to start. And then to save it and add it to a new dashboard, you just save here and add to a new dashboard, and it's like... Um, Visualizing search predictions. So, and then it'll take you to the dashboard and it's simple, but you could stay there and keep working. And this is really easy. You can export the chart metadata, force ref refresh. Um, there's SQL Lab, lots of usefulness in evaluating your uh, index and or queries or um, other information about your search application, if you store it in a collection. So now uh, we can go deeper and, and, and create a lot more visualizations. Uh, and I, I, I think I will, but I want to ensure that if there are any questions about what's going on here so far, or like any curiosities or, um, go ahead. So that's a good question, and um, I believe that that's being discussed now, uh, just joins uh, in general, and I have not, I have not attempted to, to query two collections. I think the, the issue might be the connector between the, uh, between SQL and, and Superset. I think it should be possible, there's no limitation other than the connector. So but let me check, actually. I'll create another. So I can create another collection really quickly. Um, uh, and we can find out. Uh, it'll take, like, maybe less than a minute. I should take less than a minute. Internet. And then I go to data sources, index workbench, data sources. No existing data source. So I can point to CNN. Uh, com. So it's a it's really interesting thought because if you're trying to do like investment analysis, you probably want to pull in data from more than one source, uh, multiple collections in this case. So um, I will limit the documents to five. And so here we have five documents. Now I'm going to try, I'm going to try to uh, query both collections and join them. Um, very, very good question. I've never tried to, uh-oh. Uh, 
let's see tables you know what uh, I forgot the each collection is treated as a database so even though they're they sort of felt more like a table. Let's see here. Um, this is going to be interesting. It may work, but I'm not sure if it will. But I don't see where my connection string is. All the oh, I went to edit table. That's the database. Edit. So I'll grab that and then create a new database. Um, collection two. Grab this password again. Seems okay. Right, row. Now let's see if we can. Oh, so if I let me make sure I exposed it in the expose the DB in the SQL lab. Well, this DB in the SQL lab? I need to add a table just to be sure that it has a table. Um, collection 2, default again. Like I said, just to keep things simple, I'll name it collection 2 again. You, hmm. Did I pick the wrong? So let me check. Maybe this is blocking me before I can try it. But I don't think that's a collection too. Oh, you know what? I know what it is. Uh, so I, I set up collection two and I saw this, uh, these simulated results, but I hadn't actually indexed any data. So I hadn't started the crawl. So that's that's what happens if there's no data in there. So I, I start the crawl. There's no data in there. See what happens. Come on. It doesn't know that it exists yet, even though it's there. Let's see here. So it's definitely there. So let me see. I'm going to pull up the solar UI just to make sure. Everything I'm seeing, I can believe. Sometimes there's some lag. Uh-oh, 65. 35. Hmm. I always forget there's a... Too many, there's too many URLs in my head. Yeah, I'm almost out of battery. Clock's ticking. So, 
Yeah. Collection 2 is here and Financial Oracles is here, so should be a table. So let's see if I can default collection 2. I don't know. Looks like it doesn't like trying to connect to multiple databases for the, if they're in the same the same source, which would make sense because, well, if they share a schema, then schema name. I don't know. I have to dig in. I'm going to dig into it. There could be something else uh, going on. May, like there's a few different ways you can connect to. Uh, superset or Zeppelin using solar so I just have to look into how I'm connecting if, if that's a limitation that I've imposed by my own choice of how to connect I'm using Pi Hive but maybe there's a, a, a better way so let's see here is there so I'm almost up against is there a do you have a, the charge the adapter Oh, behind. I have it. It's here. But I think the presentation is taking a lot of power. Or if you have a European charger. But um, the... The good thing about, so I need to look into that limitation because that's a major one, actually. Um, thanks. Perfect. The big thing, uh, the, the great thing about Superset is it, it's super lightweight and you can get started with it really quickly. Um, let me see if I can add uh, as a table I'll try this. I don't know what's gonna if it's gonna work. Yeah, so I think I, I I bet it's the way I'm connecting. But the the thing that's really good about Superset is just that it's uh, very lightweight and it's really easy to use. So in the companies that use Superset, it's very popular. Like it's, it has a lot of adoption because uh, it's not overly complex like I think Zeppelin is great for data scientists and engineers um, and Superset is uh, really accessible I don't know I mean I don't know if it has enough features for uh, all data scientists but definitely some and it has the SQL lab so it has some interesting type ahead features and, and query search features that help you so so look star from like the I think that's really good and you can share a query copy it to a clipboard there's query history um, lots of shortcuts throughout and it's probably in your language is it in German I don't know if people's language here is German but it is in German um, any any other questions about it I can show you some Another visualization as well, an easy one or a, hard, a more complex one if you want. Any any questions? Did you did did you try to set up this in the lab? Did you use the lab application? Did you have any trouble? It's really simple, right? So I think you could probably take it much further than than this. I think that's the goal. And like, if you encounter any problems or you fix an issue with SQL. Uh, Solar SQL, open a Jira issue and email the mailing list and make a pull request. Or on Superset, if you encounter something, I think you can just open an issue um, and they'll get on it as soon as they can to various people, the community. Uh, and I, I think that's pretty much all that I want to share. Like I. I think that this is 
a very pro, uh, practical use of this application, but it's not the only use. Uh, I, I talked through these because I didn't want to go through them, but um, this is the extent of my slides. I hate slides, by the way. Um, and these are, so th I just wanted to show you, because you stayed for the whole demonstration, uh, which ones I picked because of the Financial Oracles app. And that was how I made money. I mean, I wasn't trying to make any money. I used Robinhood for it. It's like a, a mobile app. Uh, but I'm not big. I had like $2,000 in there before I tried this and it worked out. So, uh, but there's a lot of opportunities to work on all of these projects. Um, definitely at Lucid Works, but I think at a lot of places uh, because open source is starting to see a lot of uh, support commercially. Uh, from companies that are making investments. And it's really good because I could not afford Windows, so I had to use Ubuntu, and that's how I got into it. Um, and that's just a thank you. And, oh, yeah, there's a happy hour, salt and bone. And I think Eric will sign the Lucene in Action book. He'll sign autographs for anybody, <laughs> Lucene in Action. And all, these are all the people on, on, on the team that helped me. There's Richard, he's over there, uh, and Grandma Joanne. And so, yeah, the happy hours at Salt and Bone, I think we're probably going to just be talking about search stuff and, like, building search applications and trying to make solar less hairy. So, hairy, at least it's hairy for me. Um, and if you have any questions, you can email me or... DM me on Twitter. Uh, I'm happy to help. That's pretty much all I do is try to help developers. So, and this is what I do in my my free time is try to extend uh, some of the tools that we work with every day. So that's it. Thanks. Thank you.